All right, so today's video is going to be talking about the Navian's Universal Temperature Sensor. I've uh, been getting a lot of comments and emails um, asking about how to install it or what the part number is. So I'm going to go over everything and I'm going to leave the part number also in the description. Um, so essentially what it is, is this boiler system has a primary loop. And all that's doing is basically just pumping its hot water out of the boiler and back into itself and depending on what the temperature is set for. So if you have it set for 125 degrees, it's going to make 125 degree water and it's going to bring it right back into itself. However, this manifold here is part of what's called the secondary loop and that's what your system pumps are on that are going to your heating zone. So what's happening is the boiler is making 125 degree water and it's what you want to have is that same 125 degree water, if that's what you have it set for, to go into your zones. But you have to think about a few things, and this all comes into design. I won't get too uh, detailed as far as delta T's and whatnot. I just want to sort of explain, you know, the benefits of it and what it's doing. Um, so when that water, hot water, is going mixing with the primary and secondary loops, it's going to feed that water into the pumps. You're going to lose heat going through your heating zones and that's the point that is what's called delta t so whatever is coming back in temperature the difference from what's going out versus what's coming back is called delta t so uh, just for instance say it's 20 degrees you're losing 20 degrees from your heat emitters whether it's radiant heat whether it's baseboards radiators or whatnot doesn't matter so that cooler water that's coming back from your zones comes in and partially mixes with the boiler and also part of it will go back into um, the heating zones. And that's the, again, I won't, I'll have separate videos on primary and secondary um, piping configurations and why you do that. But um, the point is you're gonna be getting cooler water coming back. Um, so the boiler only knows, if you set this to 125 degrees, it only knows what temperature it's making itself. It does know what's coming back into it, but it doesn't know what's actually going to your heating zone. So the point of the universal temperature sensor is being able to tell the boiler specifically what you want going to your zones. Even though you set it here, like I said, for 125, maybe you're only getting 110, 115, 120. It all depends on the system uh, specifications and how it's designed. But the point is you're pretty much not always getting that 125. So for example, in this system, I'm usually a few degrees off. So what you do is you mount the sensor, which I have mine right here behind this tape. Uh, it's on the back of the pipe. It's right up against the copper pipe. And what that's doing is monitoring the temperature that's actually going to my zone pump. So one, two, three zones right here. So whatever the temperature that's actually being delivered versus what's coming out of the boiler, the boiler now knows. Um, so what you would want to do now is enable that sensor so that it's looking at that and not looking at the sensor inside of itself. So the way to go ahead and do that is go into the menu here. You're going to go to space heating operation. You're going to go to, let's see down here. SH control method. So that's space heating control method. It's going to prompt you on some directions and then what you what you want it set for is system supply temperature. Notice originally it would be on supply temperature. That's what the boiler is supplying. So we want it on system supply temperature. We'll go ahead and click that and you could exit back out and now the boiler is going to look at that. Now what that means is I'm going to go ahead and shut this off too in case it kicks on. It'll be a little loud trying to talk over it since the cover's off. So what that's going to do now is look at that sensor and maybe if it's a few degrees lower, the boiler might actually have to make a few degrees hotter water to get you what you really want there. So if I have this boiler set for 125, I'm only getting 120 here. It's going to look at that and say, okay, maybe I need to make 130 degree water to get you your 125 there. Now, the reason you'd want this is um, it's not that you'd have a major difference um, heating or not heating your home, but if you are designing a specific temperature to be going to your zones, which you should be, uh, again, whether it's radiant or I'm sorry, whether it's uh, 
baseboards or radiant heat, or radiators, whatnot. If you have a specific design temperature, you want to ensure that's what you're doing. So um, that's now what that sensor is going to do. Now that sensor, since it's called the universal temperature sensor, it could be used universally. That means um, depending on where you wire it into, which is right here on this bottom bank, all the way to the left, it says, it's probably hard to read on camera, but there's one that says supply or return. So you can actually, if you want, also allow this blower to look at the return temperatures. Now there's very rare and specific uh, instances you'd want to do that, but you have the ability to. So you could put that sensor on the return and then what that would do is the boiler would uh, modulate to allow itself to always maintain a specific return temperature. So uh, pretty cool sensor. I definitely recommend it, um, especially in cascade systems and whatnot. And um, I actually plan on doing another video talking about cascade systems. So we'll, we'll sort of integrate how that would work in one of those. Um, but yeah, that's it. Like I said, I'll leave the part number in the description. I hope that sort of clears things up. I wouldn't be making this video unless I got a ton of questions about it. So, um, and I guess since I do always recommend it, I wanted to be able to explain why and how to go about doing that. So, you know, just ensure that you're putting it on the correct supply piping. Uh, make sure you enable it because it will not. And sometimes I have noticed that whether you lose power or shut this off or um, you may have to go back in and ensure that you, it's still enabled. Um, I have unplugged this a few times and noticed that the setting goes back to default. So just make sure it's enabled um, and sort of monitor it and see if it's doing what you uh, expect it to. So yeah, if you like this video, if it's helpful, um, give it a thumbs up for sure and subscribe if you haven't yet. Tons of other videos about boiler systems, uh, construction, and all sorts of stuff. So I uh, hope you guys liked it. And with that said, I'll see you guys on the next one.